Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please pray? Your Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise. For you who have given to us the fulfillment of all your word, the fulfillment of all your grace, and his name is Jesus. Lead us by the power of your Holy Spirit to live our lives in that fulfillment of your word so that we may continue to live out the fulfilled life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we hear our text from our gospel lesson this morning, we hear that the people, well, they were ready to settle in. They were ready, ready to settle in. They were waiting for the message. And it reminds me of a story that, uh, that I experienced while I was at the seminary. My second year at the seminary, we had a professor who was known for extremely short messages in chapel service. Four minutes, max. And so we, we and three of my friends are sitting in the pew, we're getting, oh wow, Dr. Vellis is preaching. This one ought to be interesting. Because, and we all went and looked at our watch. We were going to time him, see how short he was this week. So he gets up stands up into the pulpit, he reads the text, and to this day, I do not remember what the text was. <coughs> I don't remember what it was. I, I heard it, but I didn't hear it. And then all of a sudden, he, he finishes reading the text, and he says, what else is there to say but amen? Turn around and walk right out of the pulpit. <laughs> and you could have heard a pin drop in that chapel. What? 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 What did he say? And we're all looking at each other. We didn't even get a chance to time him. He didn't even give us a chance. And we're all going, what is this? And by that time, chapel service is now almost over. We're waiting for the message. And a lot like the Jews in our gospel lesson today, they were waiting for the message as well. Let's hear, listen to what God has to say uh, through St. Luke. The Spirit, and this is what Jesus read. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Hands will scroll off, sits down. We're all waiting for Jesus to say something. And what he said simply was this. Today, this will be, the, it is fulfilled in your hearing. And they're all going, what did he say? I don't know, did he, what, what did he say? He didn't say anything, did he? Because, that's because they were asking that question, is because they didn't hear it. Listen to it again. Listen to what Jesus said. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What they were looking for was Jesus to do in Nazareth what He had previously done in Capernaum. And what was that? To give sight to those people who were blind, they could now see. To give sound and the ability to hear to those who were deaf. To heal people, to bring, the, bring their broken bodies into a restoration. They were expecting Jesus to do that. They were not expecting Jesus to say something a little deeper than just the surface. They didn't hear that Jesus was saying, I came to heal your brokenness and your blindness of sin. I came to, to give you sight to see the gospel. Not just to live your life as whatever you're doing right now. I, I, I didn't come just to give broken bodies heal, like healing like lepers and, and cripples. No, I came to bring healing of your soul. I came to bring the healing of the gospel message that God says to you, you are whole. 
Maybe not a body, but of life. No, what they didn't hear either was the fact that Jesus says, I came to bring you freedom. Not freedom from oppression of any other nation. I didn't come to bring you freedom from the oppression of the Romans. No, I came to bring you freedom from sin and death and the influence of Satan. That's what I came to free you from. And they didn't hear it. And Jesus called them on it. He basically said, you're looking for me to bring bodily healing like I did in another town. You know what? That's not what I'm all about. And he used the example of Elijah and Elisha. No, you missed it. And they missed it so much that they were ready and willing and able to run Jesus off the cliff and kill him because he dared to teach them the truth about their own lives. Jesus called them on it. Called them on their sin. The question that I have to ask you simply is this. What are we not hearing? What are we not hearing? Well, I think there's three things we are not hearing. First of all, Jesus is our Savior. We're not hearing that. We're not hearing that Jesus is the one who came to, to not just to physically heal us, but to save us. And that's his true healing. That's the sight that he gives to us. is a sight to see the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ. The sight that he wants us to see is not with these eyes. But the sight to see Jesus. Jesus is our Savior. He saved us from all the crippling effects of sin and death and hell. Because that's the second thing that we're not hearing. Jesus is our freedom. It has nothing to do with earthly kingdoms and reigns. Nothing to do with that. It has our freedom from sin, from death, from hell, from that Satan, that snake, that lying, tempting thing. Jesus is our freedom from that. Jesus is our freedom to see that we're not caught up in the ways of the world, that we're not sucked into all the things of the world and our human nature, as well as the lies of Satan. Jesus is our freedom. He gives us life to see and to experience something grander than just this. Grander and more wonderful than just the existence in this world. We are free. Free to live for Him. And that leads us to the third thing we are not hearing. Jesus is our life. Not just this, this body, because that's not what our life is 100% all about. Yes, God wants us to live our lives for Him in this world right now. And it really doesn't matter about what condition the body is in. Because we are healed and free. And we have a life to live for Him. Because the life is not just this earthly life alone. It's eternal. Our eyes, our life, our focus is not just here and now. Although it needs to be. But it is also eternal. Our lives and our focus is God gives us life and gives us freedom and gives us salvation to experience life today and forever. And forever. And that's what guides and directs what we do every day. This is, I believe, what we are not hearing when Jesus speaks to us. So what does this mean then? First of all, it's time to open the ears. It's time to open the ears. 
It's time to hear what God is saying to us. It's time to hear what God is saying to us. Right here, right now. Let's start now in listening and hearing what God is saying. And it's not just limited to what goes on inside this room. It's not just limited to what goes on inside in the rooms in this church building. It's time to hear what God has to say through His wonderful and gracious Word every day of your life. It's time to hear it. The wonderful, saving message of Jesus Christ. It's time to hear what God has done for you. It's time to hear. It's also... It's time to allow the Word to work. God's Word is a wonderful tool. It's the voice of God for sure. And it's also a wonderful tool for us to use. And it's a wonderful tool for us to use as it makes its impact in us. Like, for example, go back to our opening example, I still do not remember what Dr. Veltz read. It's time to let that word work. For God's word is a sharp, double-edged sword working in your hearts and working in your lives. It is a tool that we use to bring the salvation and life to those around us. And finally, it's time to live the Word. It's not just time to hear it. It's not just time to say, oh, that was good, that's really cool, I can do that, I can live that. No, it's time to actually to live it. To put it into practice. To put it in your lives, whether it's at school, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, or wherever you are, let the Word of God work. Live the Word. And what Paul says, he, he says simply, it was in our epistle lesson last Sunday. When I am changed and affected by the Word of God, how can I live in sin any longer? When I am affected by the power and the strength that God's Word is, how can I live in the sinfulness that is encompassing me and around me and in this still this human flesh? And the answer is, I can't. I can't live like this anymore. I don't want to. I want to live the Word of God. I want to live the Word of God today and in every day that God has given me in this world. And then I will live in the Word of God forever. All simply. In the words of Jesus said, and today it is fulfilled. You are here. It is fulfilled. of God that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.